Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com and today I just want to demonstrate a couple uh, patch panels and some products that we have online that I think you'll fall in love with if you're a, an installer. Um, first I want to point out, if you notice if you're buying from us that um, most of our equipment comes in uh, uh, brown boxes like this and that's on purpose, that's the way I order them because when you order the retail packaging uh, of these products uh, you're paying extra money and it's not necessarily a, a wise choice I mean it's just waste you know I, I send you this box with this uh, patch panel in it and then you turn around you take the patch panel out throw the box in the trash and since we're not a retail uh, organization I want to cut the cost as low as possible so I can pass on the savings to my wonderful customers and that would be you who are listening so I want to talk about some of our patch panels and why they're better uh, than the average patch panel out there and one of the things I want to point out is the way it punches down so we'll take a look at it here this is 110 punch down and some of the other patch panels that are out there especially the ones you see like in uh, electrical stores or some competitors even they sell universal now universal punch down costs less um, to buy so the manufacturer uh, manufacturers for America manufacturers for Europe for Australia and everything else and these little areas here, these punch down areas here, uh, are going to be uh, different types of uh, different uh, different tools you could use to put the cable in. We use 110 in America. That's your standard 110 punch down. And we also have those punch down tools online, so that um, yeah, you know you can buy those also. But uh, our installers here in America use 110. Now they got Bic and they got Crone, they got other things. And when you have that multi purpose. Uh, punch down area. Uh, it's like anything else. It's designed uh, not just to work here, but there and everything else. Well, what happens is it really doesn't do any uh, any of the uh, the design effort correct. I hope I'm explaining myself here clearly. Um, that when you have something that's made with a single use, um, and that's our standard in America, uh, you're going to have this punch down that's going to be easy. And it's going to work every time. It's going to be reliable and this is the standard so don't go with the universal punch down I've never used it in my uh, many many years of cabling I always demanded 110 punch down all our products are 110 punch down so obviously this is cat 5e it has uh, a nice little uh, screen here there these little papers come out and you can type in there or, or write in there with a sharpie you know this is uh, um, grandmom's office and uh, this is uh, the lawyer's office and uh, this is the secretary and this is the printing or whatever else you want to write in there now of course I don't actually use those but I, I kind of thought that'd be significant people can write on there and make it nice for you uh, I actually use the numbers and I just number the jacks so when you go to a jack jack number one refers to um, the first port on the uh, patch panel and if you have more than one patch panel then I put the, the highest patch panel is going to be patch panel A and I usually do a little uh, P-touch uh, printing here and put an A right here. So I know A1 is is uh, on this patch panel and the jack will say A1 on it also. So um, uh, these are sturdy, well-built steel, uh, been tested. Um, they're just really nice, they hold up nice, they work extremely well and you get them in uh, category 5e and category 6 the most popular categories that are out there today again brown boxes is a lot less expensive than printing boxes uh, such as this and at the same time the single type of punch down what we use in america is is easier to punch down the cables and more reliable now i also have this uh, 12 porter here and i think you've seen it on other videos this is excellent and same thing it's a 110 punch down uh, here and it's it's sometimes you can see it on the video sometimes you can't um, this back this standoff bracket uh, used to go with 66 blocks uh, is nice because uh, uh, you know what you do is you put this bracket on the wall and I'm going to demonstrate all this in a second and you snap this in upside down and then you punch down all your cables and then you flip it and snap it back in and you can you can put it two ways you can put it this way on the wall or you can use it uh, vertically this way uh, and this is really nice it's nice for a home it's nice for a small office you can use uh, a couple of these it's up to you uh, if you need more than 12 ports you can use a couple of these now what I have here 
is what's called a hinged wall bracket or a standoff bracket. It's the same thing. It's just used and it notice it has it's one U, so it's going to fit perfectly with our one U patch panels, and they go right in here. And of course, they come with uh, you know your screws and stuff like that. So you can uh, actually patch it, or actually you bolt the one U standoff bracket, hinged wall bracket. You bolt that to the wall, screw it to the wall, whatever. And then when it's time to um, uh, punch down, this will hinge out like this. And then you can, of course, put all your cables in there and when you're done, you push it back and uh, you put the screws in there, you're all done. And I'm gonna demonstrate this a little, a couple minutes here. So hinged wall bracket. Now this is a really neat little device. This is uh, an unpopulated patch panel. And we have them, of course, on our website. And the nice thing about this, and some people really like this, this is, I mean, it's okay for a 12 port. You don't want to do like, you know, 20 of these uh, in your uh, data center. Um, but sometimes you have some specialties, like you may have, uh, uh, want to put all your printers uh, on this, uh, on one patch panel. Or maybe, um, you know, you want to put your fax machine. Do people still use fax machines? I have no idea. I like to get rid of mine. I think I'm going to here shortly. Um, but these, uh, what you do is you, you just take your regular jacks. Here's some examples. There's some regular jacks. And, and you can pick the colors, which is kind of cool. Because uh, if you really want to be particular about it, you know, you can put blue jacks on the, on the uh, faceplate in the office. And then you can... Uh, take all your blue jacks and you can just populate the patch panel with blue jacks. Let me show you how it gets in there. You just put it in there like that and it should snap. There it goes. It's right there. And then let's say uh, uh, white jacks are for uh, printers. And then you, you put a white jack here, you put a white jack in the office area where the uh, faceplate is. And of course, then it then it's going to be the same and of course there you go i didn't put it in right and you can put rj11s you can put rj45 cat 5e's cat 6 you can do a lot um, with these and 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 change up the colors you know red uh, for the boss i don't know whatever you want to do here but it's pretty creative and and you can use this in many different ways it's really sturdy um, if you do a lot of these it's really more cost effective to use the uh, you know 24 48 port patch panel um, and if you don't want to mess with that, of course, you always got the 12 port. So that's what we have here in the demo. Hey, let's go out in the warehouse and I'm going to demonstrate how these uh, patch panels um, bolt to the wall. And at the same time, I'm also going to show you some data racks and how these patch panels bolt into the data racks. So go with me now. Hi, now we're in, the, uh, in my warehouse, actually. Um, and of course, this is my demo backboard you've seen it in some other videos probably and uh, just to let you know about backboards okay when you're when you're attaching things to the wall I notice I walk into some areas and people attach right to the drywall and that doesn't last very long it comes right down and it falls off after a while you put a lot of cables into your patch cord it's gonna fall down so we don't attach things right to a drywall you need a piece of wood and this is just a demo one usually a 4x4 four four or 4x8 four in a uh, data room or, or a phone room, you always need one of these uh, to attach equipment to. It gives you a lot of flexibility and it's a lot sturdier. Now, why is it sturdier? Because we're putting the screws in right where the beams are. So if you look at a wall that's not finished, you notice that there's beams here. And uh, up and down here, of course, this is some literature to tell you all the benefits you have for working in California. Uh, but anyway, here's the beams. So we put our drywall screws right in the beams in both areas. And you can put some extra ones in there. Notice that the person who put this up did it on an angle uh, on the corners. I don't know why. These are good enough. They'll hold it. If not, you want to use a molly, uh, drill a hole through the, uh, the, uh, the wood, and just use a molly um, and uh, drywall molly. That's going to hold it also. That's better than just attaching your equipment to the wall. A lot of weight over time pulls out. Next thing you need is drywall screws. And, um, you know, we use little uh, cases sometimes to hold the drywall screw. And I'm looking over here to see if I can find one, but I don't see one handy. But, you know, just a packet of these. If you're an installer, you should have a packet of different sizes, uh, small sizes like this or uh, uh, bigger sizes. Now, the thing you have to remember that if you have a really long drywall screw, and this is not really long, okay, 
but you got a really long drywall screw, what's going to happen is if this is mounted up against a cement wall and you start drilling your equipment up against here, what's going to happen is it's going to pull your backboard away from the, the cement wall, the cinder block wall, whatever you want to call it. And so you got to have different sizes. And this is fine just for the small size, the one inch size. Um, is great for uh, your backboard. Your backboard should be 5 8 uh, to 1 inch um, uh, backboard. Don't go cheap on this because it's really great to have a nice backboard. Um, some places actually want fireproof backboards. I think that's an overkill, but that might be code in your area. And in some cities in California, I know it's code also. So let's get started. We're going to start with the standoff bracket first, or uh, the hinged wall bracket as some people call it. Let me grab it. So how, this is the hinged wall bracket, and it's going to go up here against the backboard. And of course, the first thing you want to do, now if you have two people, that's a luxury. A lot of times as an installer, it's just you. So, and by the way, <laughs> a power drill is really great. I remember years ago, I worked for a company back in the 80s for a very short time, but the owner of that company, an install, installation company, Actually, uh, uh, it, it didn't have uh, battery-powered uh, drills back then, and he made his own using a car battery. And his installers had to lug around a car battery every time they needed to drill a hole in something. And uh, it worked actually pretty good. It was unique because it was his. And, uh, and when you're in a construction site, when you're in a construction site and you don't have power, uh, and that's basically what he did. He cabled homes uh, all throughout Southern California. Um, and when you cabled those homes, you didn't have power yet. They didn't have provide power. You needed some way to draw a hole. And if you did it by hand, and there was tools that you could do by hand. They were kind of cool tools, too. Uh, but he provided his employees a, um, uh, a battery-powered uh, drill of his own design. It was kind of neat. Now, you notice I put one in already. And so... As I put that one in, what I did is uh, I just hung the thing on it, right, which gives me freedom to come up here and put the second screw in. And uh, one of the things you want to do, which we're not doing today, um, is you want to make sure this is level. If you don't have a level, then do your best guess uh, on it. It's, it's, uh, remember, neatness counts when it comes to cabling, and it does count here. Now, you notice I just put the screws in, and that's probably good enough. It's going to hold. Um, but sometimes it would be nice to have the, um, uh, the washers, have little washers with you on things like this just to hold it in place. I like the black drywall screws. There's other colors, believe it or not, gold, I think. But I like the black ones because they blend right in with the equipment. Now, you notice I have two screws in here. That's not good enough because what's going to happen is someone's going to come in, and they're going to hit it, and it's going to fall down. So you don't want that, um, especially if it's attached to all your equipment. So what you're going to want to do is put in four screws. So you put one at the top. I'm sure you can see the, the little marks there. One at the top uh, on each side, and then one at the bottom. And I'm going to tighten these up just to let you see how it looks. Now, what happens here is it stops it from someone walking around and hitting it. You see, that's in there. That's not going to move. It's, it's there solid. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes you put equipment on the wall, and uh, it doesn't give you this feature of two screws. And so what you do is you put the one screw in, and you hook it down. And then once it's hooked down, you just take at the top... and you put a screw at the top, like this. And what's nice about that is it, it acts the same way as putting screws here at the bottom. It stops it from going up. So a lot of times I see people sometimes in phone rooms trying to remove equipment, and they're having a heck of a time trying to remove it. They've, they moved the one or two of the screws, and they can't figure out why it won't come off the wall. It's because someone put a couple screws on top to stop it from being pushed up, and therefore being pulled off the wall by accident. So. 
at least four screws. Uh, drywall screws work great. I use them for everything uh, that I need to attach, drywall screws, different sizes. If this was a uh, cement wall, I don't want a screw that's going to pull my backboard away from the cement wall. Eventually it'll come off. So I want to have short screws for that. Uh, I use a lot of short screws uh, here, but the long ones, you need the long ones, two inch, three inch or whatever, to go through the drywall here on the, um, uh, on the beams. And so you want to go right there and you want to use the longer drywall screws. And this thing is solid, it's not going to move. So let's go to the next step, which is putting the patch uh, panel on the standoff bracket, hinged wall bracket, whatever you want to call it. So what I got here is a 24 port patch panel and we're going to attach it here and there's some tricks, some reasons, some ways you do things um, that will really help you when you're out in the field. Now if you look at these screws, they're different than the drywall screws. They're not pointy, they're, they're not self-tapping, but they are self-centering. Now you know what's really strange is sometimes the manufacturers give you these, or actually when you, when you get the brackets, they give you steel uh, self-tapping screws and they don't really work well on backboards. You've got to use that drywall uh, screws. They really work well. They're very inexpensive. Now on one side of the hinge bracket is the hinge and this is very useful and I want to show you why it's going to be useful. And then of course this side is not hinged. And this is a 1U. Notice I'm not going to use my drill now because I don't need to and I don't want it to tighten up really fast like that. I want to have a little more control over my uh, uh, screw here than I normally would have with a drill. Uh, if I can get that screw in there. So this is where you use the self-centering, not self-tapping, but self-centering screws. Actually you don't even need self-centering, you just need the right the screw pattern. So. The standoff brackets come with screws. So, now this is one way the cable, I'm going to show you another way too in a second. Cable 24 port or 48 port or whatever it's on a standoff bracket, but this is just one way. And the nice thing about this is you can pull this out like this and you can punch down um, uh, on this right here and but you got to remember okay that if you're I didn't tighten these screws over here if you're going to uh, put this up against uh, the wall like that what you want to do is you want to run your cables this way and give a little bit extra so that they you can turn and open for future use. That's probably the best reason to have a hinged bracket. Because once you put this bracket up, you know, how do you get back there uh, to punch things down? Um, well, there is a way, but I'm going to show you another way to put up a, uh, uh, a patch panel that I have used in the past. Actually, it's the way I prefer it. So I'm going to take this off. Now this way, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it over like this, okay? Now you can also turn it over like this. You see how I flipped it? Or whatever you prefer, you can turn it over like this. Now my prefer preference would be just flipping it. So let me put a screw in each side.
So this is the other way you can do it. And, um, uh, you know, obviously um, what you want to make sure is how you're going to flip it back. So if you're going to flip it back, make sure that the cables are in such a way that will actually fit. So once you cable this all down, you got these little saddle things here where you can put your uh, uh, tie wraps. So you want to tie wrap it down pretty securely, making sure it's, it's held tightly. Now some people like to bring in their cables this way. Uh, I don't know why, or no, I'm sorry, not that way. They want to bring in this way and then out. I like to bring my cables across uh, the center and use these tie wraps. But whatever you do, if you're going to use this method, you got to tie wrap down uh, securely. Now when you use tie wraps, don't monster tie wrap it in, you know, to where it uh, deforms the cable. Because when you deform the cable, you can actually affect the category of the cable by doing that. So you don't want to do that. You just want to snug, just snug. Um, you know, you want, to, you want to be able to hold it in place, but you don't want to deform the cable. So this is how it would go, and this is how it would look, and this is how you would run the cable. Now next I'm going to show you, obviously it's going to be almost the same, uh, but I'm going to show you the, uh, uh, the unpopulated patch panel. And this is very useful. A lot of times you use it in this situation. I like this on 12 port. Once you go above 12 port, it, it, my opinion, my preference is to use a traditional patch panel. But what's nice about this is you can just put your regular RJ45 jacks in there. And they pop in, they pop out. You can use the different colors uh, to set up your um, the sense of uh, creativity. Uh, you can use you know, maybe a blue jack one on one and then when you go out to the office area that could be blue and and uh, the white can be out there and then you can use yellow and red and all for the different uh, areas in the office and someone would look at it this is only for a small office or home by the way someone would look at it and say oh it's a red jack they go back here and they find the red they plug it in multiple different ways to do it you can also use um, any type of um, keystone uh, placement here. So you can use coax, you fill these all up with coax, or you can use RJ11, um, or you can use BNC. I don't know, you want to use them BNC. I guess they still use BNC with some cameras out there, uh, use BNCs. But I haven't used BNCs in years, and it does take a little bit of skill putting the BNC connector on the end. Um, but anyway, you can use anything you want in here. Now remember, if you're going to use um, RJ11, why buy an RJ11 jack? I'm going to be honest with you. Buy an RJ45, cable it like you normally would for a computer on both sides, and then just plug in an RJ11. It actually will work. RJ11 this side, RJ11 on the other side. It will actually work, and it actually works pretty well. So there's not a problem. You don't need a, a dedicated RJ11 jack for an RJ11 to actually work. So an RJ11 um, uh, line cord, um, patch cord, will actually work on an RJ45 jack and have no problems at all. Because the RJ11 uh, mod plug, you know, a little clear thing that has the button on the end, um, that actually is smaller than the RJ45. It's smaller when it comes to the width, but it's not smaller when it comes to the height. So it will actually click right in here with no problems at all. And of course, always remember uh, that there is an up and down on jacks. You don't put them in upside down. Uh, because dust can get on the contacts, <coughs> all sorts of issues can get on the contacts. So uh, the, the way to know uh, that you put it in right is actually the contacts are going to be on the roof, not, on, not in the basement, okay? And so that's how you know that you put your jack on right both at the wall and also on a patch panel like this. So uh, this is pretty flexible, creative. It's built really strong. It's just as strong as, as you would find anywhere else, but it's, it's just a, a great system. So let me undo this and go into the next. Okay, now this is a 12-port um, uh, Cat 5e, but Cat 6 looks the same way. Um, you know, these things used to cost like 100 bucks a couple years ago, or even more. 
Uh, and now the price has really come down and the quality is actually uh, uh, significantly improved. And I really like these things. So this works great in the house. If you saw that video that I did extensive, I at least talked you through how to cable a house. Um, you notice that we were using uh, this at that house, and I've used this often at homes. Even though I don't cable at homes, because homes, homes are three times harder to cable than businesses, and usually people don't expect to pay uh, three hours uh, to have a jack put in somewhere. So it's really hard to cable a home. If you're going to cable a home, if you're building a home right now, cable it with the highest uh, category you possibly can and make sure you put in all the jacks everywhere you could possibly think and also access for AP sites on different floors, different areas. Another video for another day. But anyway, let's work with this 12 port and we call this a vertical, 12 port vertical patch panel. Uh, but you can put it in horizontally too. Uh, but normally because the standoff bracket has been used in the past for other equipment, it's usually put in this way. So that's why it's called a vertical patch panel. And, um, but there's nothing that's in law that says you can't do it sideways. And some people prefer it that way because all the numbers would read easily, things like that. Um, but it's also a, a space saver, um, you know, on a small backboard uh, to have it go this way with the other equipment uh, that sometimes you need. Um, routers and switches, sometimes uh, stuff from uh, the cable supplier, um, uh, cable TV supplier that has their equipment there too. So the way you do this is these little, uh, these little uh, arms right here, just if you push them back, uh, they will snap off or snap on. And as you see, like that. If you break one of these, it's pretty easy to get this replacement. This is very inexpensive. In fact, these days, this patch panel is very inexpensive and very flexible. Um, now, I wouldn't recommend this if you're a company that has, you know, um, 50 drops to add all these. That's just disorganization it turns out to be. But what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, attach this quickly, and then we're going to move on and look at some uh, uh, how some of these things attach into a, a, um, a full-size data cabinet. So stay with me. So again, the first thing I want to do is I don't want to hold this up here and then drill. So I just want to put the screw on the wall to start with. So you put the screw on the wall. And then you just slide it on. And most of the times in our industry, we use those ears that are sticking out. And uh, so, you know, you can put it on just like this. And if you have your level, you run a level on the side, and this is adjustable. So it's going to help you adjust. As soon as you get adjusted, then you tighten up. Now you notice there's other screws here too, or screw holes here. So you can take the screw and you can put it through there if you don't, you know, you so desire or whatever you want. It doesn't hurt it. But once you get this on the wall, You know, obviously you can't punch it down that way. So all you do is you just flip it over and you punch it down that way. So the cable can come out from the bottom, from the top, or from the sides. It's up to you. Just remember that when you punch these down, you punch it down like that, or any way you punch it down, that you got your tie wrap uh, saddles here. And you put your, your tie wraps into those saddles, you know, tighten it down, obviously not to deform the cable but you just you tie them and neatness counts and so that's where you would put them you should have a little bit of a service loop here you know like this so you know maybe the cable comes down and then back up and the reason why is in the future if you need to move this thing to somewhere else then you have a little bit extra cable so always put in a, a service loop sometimes service loops should be put up in the ceiling I remember once I was consulting with a big corporation and they had a big uh, data room and they had a, uh, a couple of backboards to where uh, uh, all the equipment was being put on for the telephone system. And for some reason on earth, I have no idea why, um, the guy uh, stuck his equipment right in the center of the backboard rather than using the economy here of, of, of planning out the backboard 
Um, but now he has it right in the center, so everyone else has to work around him type of thing. And there was a problem. We couldn't do that. So, and I forget the exact details, what type of equipment he had there and everything else. But one of the things I knew from cabling is that good cablers always have service loops. And sometimes they leave it in the ceiling um, of a business. And so I got a broom and I lifted up the ceiling tile and I could see the service loop. And then he came in and I said, this thing needs to be moved over to the side because I have other equipment that's going to take up a lot of space. And he said, well, I don't have enough cable. You can see the cable won't go over there. And I took the broom handle and I lifted it up and I said, yeah, but that cable will. And so the salesperson, a little bit of a red face, I said, yeah, don't put your, don't put your equipment in such a way that it makes every other vendor uh, difficult to put their equipment. So be concerned and courteous about other vendors that need to put their equipment on that wall also. So if you put your cabling right in the middle and then I'm going to need a ton of 66 blocks which you don't need them anymore but if I had a ton of 66 blocks that I had to put in there uh, for my phone system what am I going to do? Put 66 blocks on all around it? No, you think it through. So at least this cabling uh, guy knew enough to put a service loop up there. He didn't know enough about the economy of, of a backboard and how to design a backboard. It's not that hard. It's kind of intuitive. You know, you just don't hog the whole backboard and you put it in such a way that your equipment can attach to other equipment and you're not in the way of other vendors' equipment. So let's take a look at, the, uh, at a, a data cabinet that I have and how these patch uh, panels will work right in a data cabinet. So next, let's look at a data cabinet. Now, uh, most data cabinets are the same except for one issue. You see these little squares here? Um, what you need to do is you need special nuts and bolts in here, and the nuts actually snap in there, and then, then you use the bolts. I prefer the ones that, that are already threaded for the screws, and they're circles all along here. Some people prefer the squares. Not me. I prefer the, the things because I can move it around. I don't have to worry about whether there is a... Um, you know, a nut behind it, but the nut actually snaps into these little squares if you can see it. It's kind of hard to see here in the dark. Maybe with my hand behind it you can see it. Um, and it snaps in there. I like the numbers on there because it gives you, you know, what you can do from the ground up, uh, the different use. So remember, we have a 24 port patch panel, and of course we have our a set of screws. It's just easy. It just goes right there. It's easy as pie. You just screw it in. Now, the nice thing is also that they, in the back, this is a brand new uh, um, data rack, and um, it has holes in it so the air can go through it from the cold to the hot section, uh, things like that. Uh, you can use it in a data room, you can use it in numerous places. Uh, but in the back, you can't see it with the video right now, but it has a bag full of accessories for those nuts that need to go there. And it's also pretty deep, so you can put in a big server and uh, r still have room in the back for your cabling, things like that. Um, the thing I like about it, too, is it comes with a lock. So you got a key here. It has a couple keys. And you should always think about, you know, how other people uh, are going to see your work. So it should always be clean and neat. It's easier to troubleshoot when it is. But also, people sometimes get curious, and they have no sense of responsibility, and they start playing with things. And they think they're learning, they're teaching themselves. And what they're doing is they're knocking the network uh, offline. Sometimes people do it um, on purpose. You know, they're, they're mad at your company, or they're mad at your customer's company, and they want to screw with things. And then, of course, you have to go out and fix it. So, uh, or the company has to have an IT person, you know, fix it or figure it out. And sometimes it's not as straightforward as need be. So this is one way. Now another is a uh, data rack itself. And all that is just two heavy-duty um, aircraft quality aluminum uh, posts that can be bolted to the ground and at the same time have a top that can be secured with a bracket to the wall. And that's really the best when you're dealing with uh, a lot of patch panels, you know, 48 ports, top to bottom. I've been in rooms where, man, the whole room, you know, 12 foot across is patch panels and switches. And they'll put all the patch panels on the, on the I-beams and they'll use a cabinet for the switches and they'll route things to the cabinet. You know, of course, you know, locking it up, you can't lock up a, a data rack, but you lock the room. So always think of limiting access to your data room. 
But at any rate, this works with all of them. Standardization, uh, the U system, uh, this is a 1U. Uh, if you had 2U, obviously it would be twice as big. And, um, and a 48 port is going to be 2U. So you're going to see that. Um, and just, just think about U's when you order these things. Uh, don't think about, well, it's 5 foot, you know, it'll just work in there. Well, of course it will if it's, if it's designed for U's and just about, not just about every piece of equipment that I know of that goes in data rack. It's either a 1U or a 2U or a 4U if it's a uh, router or a switch sometimes or bigger. So um, hope I helped you out with uh, what type of uh, patch panel uh, that you want to get uh, that fit your needs. Always remember if um, you use uh, category 6 jacks, you use category 6 cable, you're under that 300 foot recommended distance that I've told you about in other videos even though you can go a little bit further, but 300 foot underneath that to keep it, to keep it as short as possible. Um, and so if you do that, and then you also have a patch panel along with your patch cords, um, you know, CAT6, you're gonna have a CAT6 system. Um, now, uh, just a, a side note, here's history. Been doing this since the 79. Um, the real definition of a patch cord from the wall to a computer is called a line cord. That's what they used to call them all the time. Now it's called a patch cord. A patch cord goes from a patch panel uh, to, a, uh, uh, to a switch. But you know the bottom line is, I don't care what you call it, who cares? It's just an interesting um, uh, thing from many, many years ago. It's not even used anymore. But a line cord goes from the wall to the equipment. Patch cord goes from patch panel to the equipment. Same thing. It's the same thing, it's the same cable. So if you want to call it patch cord, that's fine. Just so you didn't be interested in a little bit of history about patch cords and line cords and everything else. It's really nothing more than just a little bit of history about the past. Um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, please, please follow us on Facebook. Uh, like us on Facebook. And uh, please, uh, what is it, like us on uh, YouTube. And again, this is Jim Gibson with Cable Supply. And more important than being liked, is buy your stuff from us so we can afford to put out some more videos and, and assist you in, in your installs. And uh, have a great day. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. And today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David signing out. You stay classy, Internet. <laughs>